Dear students, I am Shiva, Faculty of Physics. Today I am here in order to discuss the concept of force on the planes of capacity. So before going to understand this topic, we can recall some ideas in the past chapter what we studied <coughs> under the name Gasla. So in the Gasla we have proved these two. So this is the proof for the electric field due to non-conducting sheet of charge. This is the proof for the electric field due to the conducting sheet of charge. One time we can recall these two basic results. Suppose you are giving some excess charge to the non-conducting sheet of charge as shown in figure. At that time, if you are concentrating some point now, here, uh, you are seeing at some distance from it, at that point, the electric field is equal to sigma by 2 epsilon. Here sigma is surface charge density that is what you are seeing on this side. Similarly, if you are taking conducting sheet of charge, in the conducting sheet of charge, any excess positive charge they have given, that excess positive charge simply distributes on the two sides of the sheet. This sheet you are seeing in the cross-sectional view. Okay, in this case, if you are concentrating the calculation of the electric field at this location, <coughs> this electric field is simply due to the two non-conducting sheets of charge. This, this conducting sheet of charge, again we can assume as equivalent to two non-conducting sheets of charge. So this one creates some field sigma by epsilon naught in the rightward direction. This one also creates some field sigma by two epsilon naught in the rightward direction. Finally, sum of these two fields superimposition used for the sigma by epsilon naught. Now come to the topic. Uh, this topic we are able to understand with the help of these two results. So first of all, we are concentrating on this parallel plate capacitor that is fully charged. How we can charge that capacitor fully? So first of all, take that parallel plate capacitor. That parallel plate capacitor now connect with battery. Once you connect the parallel plate capacitor with battery, that parallel plate capacitor will become charged until the potential difference across the plates of the parallel plate capacitor is equal to the EMF of the battery. Once the capacitor is fully charged, remove the battery and observe what we are seeing here. So this is the parallel plate capacitor that is fully charged. So we labeled this plate is positively charged having surface charge density plus sigma. This plate is negatively charged having surface charge density minus sigma. Okay, now you can observe here, this negative charge creates some field. This positive charge also creates some field. In the field created by this negative charge, this positive plate will lie. Similarly, in the field created by this positive charge, this negative plate will lie. Nothing but, since we are treating these two plates as conductors, electric field on plus Q due to this minus Q. Electric field on this plus Q due to this minus Q or electric field on this minus Q due to plus Q, both are equal, having the magnitude sigma by 2 epsilon naught, what we have discussed previously according to this gas law. Now in this case, how can we calculate the force? Nothing but this charge plus Q behaves as what charge? Test charge in the field created by this minus Q. Similarly, this minus Q behaves as what charge? Test charge in the field created by what now? This plus Q. So due to that reason, here what we can write that force now? F is equal to E into Q. So what is E? E value here for us sigma by 2 epsilon naught. So sigma by 2 epsilon naught into Q. What is sigma? Sigma we can express as total charge per total area. That's why I substitute here. What we can get now? Q by 2 epsilon naught into A into Q. That is equal to Q square by 2 epsilon naught into A. Means each plate, either this plate or this plate, experiences how much amount of force? Q square divided by 2 epsilon naught into A amount of force. But we have a chance to get one out here. 
plus Q experiences repulsive uh, attractive force towards minus Q. Minus Q also experiences attractive force towards plus Q. So why both are not uh, colliding with each other? So in order to avoid that type of collision, so we are using some dielectric. We are using some dielectric in order to make that plates now to fix in their position. So in the second case, we are seeing that uh, same parallel plate capacitor that is fully charged. But in this case, we are seeing now that separation between the plates is filled with some dielectric of constant K. Now, here also the capacitor is fully charged. So due to that reason, after the insertion of this dielectric, the dielectric uh, phases gets induced charges. So this is the individual charge we are saying with the name minus QY. This is the individual charge on this phase we are saying as plus QY. Regarding this minus QY, that induced charge density we are saying as uh, minus sigma I. Regarding this plus QY, the individual surface charge density we are seeing as plus sigma I. These plus Q and minus Q are what type of charges? Free charges that are given by battery. Okay, in this case also, what is the value of force? That force of attraction. Previously we have calculated huh? Q square by into epsilon naught A in the absence of dielectric. Now also we can try to calculate that force will come for a same or different. So let us try to calculate. So first of all here, I am now suppose I am interested to calculate the force on this uh, plus Q. So this plus Q lies in the field created by minus Q plus Q by minus Q. Okay. So in on that plus Q, you are approximately seeing three fields. The three fields are created by minus Q by plus Q by again what minus q now consider the superimposition of these three fields now what we write here that is q i am using vector equation so q v into e u to minus q y plus e bar u to plus q y plus e bar u to minus q okay now what is e bar due to the minus q by one time observe that the starting result already what i told you that we are discussed in regards to that that result now you are seeing as sigma by 2 epsilon now observe here this result now due to this minus q by into charge also what we can write now q v into okay so the electric field direction due to this minus q you can see in the direction of plus nothing but plus x axis that by here what you can write minus sigma by 2 epsilon naught into i hat plus due to this plus q y so if you assume some positive charge here this positive charge definitely experiences what force repulsive force now that's why due to this plus q y what is the direction of the uh, induced electric field Again, we can say this is plus sigma by 2 epsilon naught into i hat. Okay. Similarly, due to this minus q, so minus q also creates some field at this location. Yeah? So minus q creates uh, the field on plus q in what direction? In the positive direction. Nothing but simply we can write here sigma by 2 epsilon naught into i hat. Okay. So nothing but these two terms gets cancelled. Finally, here what we get F bar is equal to Q V into sigma by 2 epsilon naught into I hat. So if you want to write in the scalar form, in the scalar form what we can write F is equal to Q V into sigma again we can write as Q by A, then it will become Q by 2 epsilon naught into A. So finally it was becoming for us Q square by 2 epsilon naught into yeah, nothing but the force acting on this plus Q due to all of these source charges we are seeing as Q square by 2 epsilon naught into A in what direction? In the plus X direction. Similarly, you can calculate the same force on minus Q. You will get the same amount of force but in what direction? Minus X direction. One time you can observe these two results. This result 
as well as this result you are seeing same nothing but what we can conclude whenever you are inserting the dielectric before the insertion what is the force that you are seeing between the plates after the insertion also we can see what is that force force cannot be changed it is same amount that's why only in the past video there we have seen na whenever you are introducing the dielectric without applying any external force the dielectric exhibits only oscillatory motion there why we are thinking that one oscillatory motion why is here clearly we are seeing the force acting on the dielectric is simply constant it is not dependent upon any external suppose if you are getting the force acting on the dielectric is directly proportional to minus x at that time that motion we can say simple harmonic motion oscillatory as well as simple harmonic but in this case you are seeing that force just only what type of force constant force that's why the constant force does stable to create what type of motion oscillatory motion okay in this manner we can calculate the force on the plates of capacitor before introducing the dielectric after introducing the dielectric with the help of the two results obtained from gas car okay students i hope you understood this lecture well in the next lecture we can meet with one more new topic thank you for watching